bliss fit for any king. Tutankhamun sits on a cushioned chair, firing off arrows. And notice how the artist didn't feel that he could allow the arrow or the bowstring to obscure the royal face with rather peculiar results. Meanwhile, the queen sits at his feet, a lotus flower in one hand and an arrow in the other, which she's about to hand to her lord and master. Tutankhamun seems to have been very keen on the blood sports. The ostrich feathers of this ceremonial fan have long since decayed, but according to the inscriptions, they had been obtained by His Majesty when hunting in the desert east of Heliopolis. And both faces of the palm are embossed with lively scenes of the king on an ostrich hunt. On one side, he's in his chariot, assaulting two stricken ostriches on the right. And at the same time, he's being shaded by a small ankh figure in the left-hand corner, holding just this sort of fan. On the other side, he's returning home in triumph, while two servants of superhuman strength carry home the dead ostriches, each of which weighed 345 pounds. Among the 143 personal possessions that had been tucked into the bandaging of the mummified body were two daggers, one of iron and one of beaten gold. The gold dagger was probably for ceremonial uses, a beautiful piece of craftsmanship, and the sheath in particular is elaborately decorated with cameos of wild animals biting their prey. When he wasn't engaged in blood sports, the young king clearly enjoyed gaming. There were no fewer than four gaming boards found in his tomb. The top board on this table was for a game called